I realized that we are people, and that's what we relate to more than anything. And then after a couple of years of painting people and, and developing, I realized that eyes are really important. When you're talking to someone, you look in their eyes. I taught myself to paint people as photographically as I could, real, friends and family. And once I did that, then I started breaking it down and having fun, abstraction, and finding my way until eventually I got back to this, real people again. I had a Japanese collector years ago who said, stop thinking, just look for stuff you want to do and paint, paint, paint. Don't think about it. Let it come from the subconscious. And I really felt, bam, this is it. This is the voice I've been searching for for a long, long time. That really was the grounding. That was my schooling. I just start off with like looking for a good face or an interesting character. And I make it up as I go along. I mean, it, it, it's very tightly constructed. For a Congolese woman in drag, it was the face. And I thought, oh, put him in a man's suit, put her in a man's suit. And then look for the images. And I don't consciously think they should mean anything, but they do to someone, somewhere, somehow. And even though I'm not necessarily meaning all that, it's in me somewhere and it's in us all to, to see it. We have this image of these like boy soldiers and these uh, ignorant, vicious rebels. But I just saw this guy when I was painting him, I thought, but he's just a guy, he's just a kid caught up in this. And why couldn't he be a kid listening to tunes? You know, and just try and make the connection between them and us as opposed to like the them and us. And I think that's a key to having people relate to art in general. I live in West Beth. It's a fantastic building. We, we were landmarked this year, which is great. It was Richard Meyer, the first big commission to redesign the inside of the building. I still have doubts, massive doubts of like, what am I doing? You know, but I have confidence and security in my abilities and what I want to do with the brush, I do with the brush. I'll find an image and I'll take his photograph and I'll transfer it by hand onto a large canvas and I'll paint. If you have a certain ability and you work at it and you work at it, you work at it, you learn. If the background color in my painting is going to be a warm color, I'll usually make the person a cool color. That gives a separation. And that's the dialogue going on right there within the painting. Now think about light source. Generally speaking, the, if the light is coming from below in the background, I'll light the foreground from above. And that would give another separation, another dialogue going on. So there's conversation going on within the canvas already. The next thing I'll look for pattern. And I'll look at like a shape of a bottle, uh, a chair, just stuff that's in our life. And I'll either draw it on the background, flat, or I'll use it as an object. But the flat pattern is paramount. Because I want another conversation going, the busyness of that chaos of pattern. If the background's going to be a natural object or shape, the patterns on the foreground, the person, will be man-made. I picked the ohm sign, and once I started putting that ohm sign repeated, it's got this lovely flowing effect, it's very motion, and he stood stock still there with his carabine rifle. It's just a great contrast. It kind of undulates. I just really enjoy my work. When I look at my paintings, I want to go, check this out, look, I mean, look at this. I, I do it to myself in the middle of the night, I'll nudge my wife in bed, look at that, she's looking right at me, and I meant that. It's cool. I'm going to keep growing. I think I, I'm, I, I've got my voice now and I'm going to sing loud with it. Whatever happens, I'm going to keep painting for the rest of my life. Yeah, I'll keep painting forever.